Hey everyone, we are broadcasting live right now on Facebook at Mohawk College here in Ontario, Canada, Hamilton. And uh, for our 10th episode of Nikon TV, I'm pleased to be here with professor and program coordinator of the Mohawk College Creative Photography Still in Motion program, Scott Kenny. Thanks for coming hey, to the program, Scott. Hey, my pleasure. <laughs> Great to have you here. Honored that it's uh, the tenth uh, edition, and uh, honored to have you here in our studio. Uh, it's it's our pleasure. Actually, this is the most fun we've had setting up a, uh, a, <laughs> well, a real set. studio. Right? It's a real studio. We had access to all this lighting here, so <laughs> I think uh, this was the best, uh, the funnest setup we had here for the uh, Nikon TV crew. And uh, what better place we thought to uh, present this episode of Nikon TV because. We wanted to take a different angle for this episode and we wanted to talk about the future of education in photography. And I thought, what better place to talk about the future of photographic education, in Canada anyways, than one of the most state-of-the-art programs here at Mohawk College. Uh, it is also one of the newest programs here at Mohawk, uh, sorry, in Canada. and. Um, as one of essentially the founders of the program, um, we brought you in here to talk about the state of education and uh, we're glad you at home can uh, uh, tune in and watch. So um, for those uh, people just tuning in right now, why don't you just give them, before we get into the program, sure, uh, just sure. a little bit of a background on yourself because you do have quite an extensive uh, photographic background. Well, I appreciate that. It's a, a great thing, quick introduction. Um, it all, all started uh, years ago um, in a high school darkroom, not too uh, far away from here at uh, Barton High School in Hamilton. I'm originally from Hamilton and, and I went out and shot my very first role of film and processed that role and developed the, the negatives and uh, picked out a, a negative and uh, went into the, another dark room. Negative, and, and, what's, what's uh, a negative? Yeah, exactly. Can you remember? I'm, <laughs> I'm dating myself, I know, but that's, that's where I fell in love with photography and, and uh, made my very first print and put it into some chemistry called developer and in about 30 seconds an image came to life. And, and I knew from that moment that uh, photography was for me. I love the fact that I could create and tell the story from my point of view. Um, after that, uh, I went uh, to Sheridan College uh, at the time. That was the place to go to and, and uh, very proud of, uh, of my education there. And, and then left and uh, was trying to find a job, of course. And, and my very first job was uh, for a sports photography company based in Montreal called Marisport. Well, that's interesting because you, you mentioned the fact that uh, you did have formal education in photography. So that, I mean, I assume that uh, affected your, your path and uh, in, in getting into photography as a career. Uh, and, and working in it right out of school. So um, it's, it's, it's interesting to hear that. I mean, especially in today's day and age, we are in a different era right now. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, you're know, you kind of leading the way and pioneering the, the way the shape of education is going forward. So um, you know, without further ado, I mean, let's uh, talk about this program here. We are in basically a studio here that you kind of custom designed you know from scratch you know uh, we're using you know now LED lights and but mm -hmm. you're still teaching strobes and flash can you kind of walk us through um, what photographic education in the year 2018 looks like and maybe just kind of the, the, the concept behind this particular program because it is a unique program. Sure, it, it absolutely is. And, and uh, one of the huge benefits is where creative photography is still in motion. And so the photograph, uh, photography students not only learn stills, of course, the still side, but they learn video as well. And to be a working pro today, you have to learn both platforms and you have to understand how to shoot and capture and edit, um, add music. Um, so it's not only you know, you know, st the still side, the video side, but it's also the audio capture as well um, to create content today. And, and like the students have heard me say many times, I don't want them flipping burgers after two years of being here. We want you working in the industry. We try to make this program as real life as we possibly can in the sense of um, they're, they're constantly, uh, they're, they're constantly hands-on learning, they're constantly shooting, and we're providing lots of uh, feedback for them as well. The, the program is based on something called lecture shoot critique. So one of the professors will be up front lecturing a, a certain technique, whether it be in the studio or on location, then they'll go out and shoot that. Um, and then we always provide a constant feedback in the critiques and, and it's the critiques that really train the eye for the students and, and help them shoot better and, and create stronger, better images. 
As far as uh, the technology is concerned, is we are constantly evolving. Um, you know, dealing with you on a regular basis and, and the other manufacturers as well, and, and finding out where is this industry going, and, and we as photographers need to adapt to where the technology is going because that's what our client is going to be asking for. You know, 15, 20 years ago, you would never talk to a photographer for the most part that shot video as well. Where today it's a standard, and, and with things such as you know Instagram and social media, um, content creation for for uh, uh, for photographers is, and understanding how to shoot both still and and video is essential. Well, that's why I think your program is kind of trailblazing and leading the way uh, for you know photographic education, especially in this province, because being so new, you've been able to write the program in such a way that addresses the needs of cur the current market and the skill set that people are, well, people, customers are demanding not only from photography standpoint, but also the multimedia aspect of photography. Yeah, absolutely. And, and one of the things that, uh, that really makes the, the, this, this program so strong is the faculty. We have some amazing faculty. They're all real world working photographers, both in the photo side, video side, as well as the editing side. And, and uh, without the faculty of, of, of this program, um, we won't be nearly as, as, as successful and as strong as we are. The faculty really help to, to make that, that pr the, the program is, um, as strong as it, as it is, as, as I said, but also, you know, bend it into a way that where the industry is going and, and, and what do they need to know next. And um, one of the great things is, you know, a student or pardon me, a professor come off, off set from, from a, a commercial shoot or, or from a, a video broadcasting shoot and talk about their real world experience from, from uh, um, right to the students, uh, you know, next day. So that's important because your, your professors, they're essentially working, uh, essentially full-time photographers. They're, they're part-time here working uh, in your program instructing, but their real-world experience creates a certain relevancy to your students and kind of real-time skill uh, download to them that's uh, immediately relevant. There's no question. And then that constant feedback with, with once they create their work, that they get uh, somebody that's you know being published on a regular basis and using their work on a regular basis. So the the critiques are, are, are that uh, that more important. It's far in, in that much better in, in terms of um, um, of getting proper feedback. Right. So and how long is the program? The program is two years. Um, it is four semesters currently. Uh, first semester is still only. We want to make sure that you know your cameras like the back of your hand. Um, really uh, understanding capture and, and, and composition and light. And, and that's something that, that I don't feel enough people really uh, take in, into factor is, is, is light, not only for still, but also for, for video and, and artificial light and new technologies. And we've been lucky enough to uh, partner up with, with many different companies and, and lighting companies. And, and we've actually had to pre-production samples on, on LEDs for the last few years. Um, where our students actually get to use uh, equipment that's, that's, that's not on the market yet right. um, and, and kind of really get the, get the idea of where the industry is going. Well, that's cutting edge. So, you know what, I think now would be a good time to actually show some of the uh, images from your students. Some of them might be graduates here and uh, I think we're going to show some portrait work here that you've guys sure, shot you, in the studio. You, Maybe you, you can just walk us through some yeah, of what you, we're Yeah, you know, one of, the, one of the great things is you, uh, in the classes, we'll, we'll talk about a, a certain type of lighting technique. For example, this, this first shot that we see here is actually a Studio One class. It doesn't look like a basic setup, but, but it's from a first semester class. And so we have our students really, uh, we'll, we'll talk about uh, one technique in lighting. This is a, a single light uh, shot um, and, and we'll demo that. So one of the students will actually be shooting in a live demo with, with everyone around. We'll have some assistance. We'll have one of the students stand in in, in terms of uh, what, what the uh, what the what the shot should look at look like, pardon me, and then we'll we'll critique it, we'll break it down, and then it will be up to them as far as recreating that lighting, but with their own models, with their own subjects, if they need to bring in uh, hair and makeup, um, or, or or whatever it takes to to create that image. Okay, well, let's see some more here. I think we've got a whole reel of uh, <laughs> yeah, high, high con uh, contrast lighting. Um, y you know, not only light but also in, in this scenario uh, for Drew Scott here uh, is booking your your subjects and finding the right. To the subject to shoot. They're not always models as, as you think they are and, mm -hmm. and sometimes it depends on on the talent that you need to create that image. And I think we have one here from Patty. Uh, Patty Menendez. Yeah. This is uh, a second year uh, shoot and we can see uh, um, how well styled the lighting is uh, on this particular shot. 
I definitely noticed that from the portfolio of the kind of the tapestry that you had outside in the hallway of these top quality shots. Here. <laughs> Lauren Valasori was a graduate in one of the first years of, of this program and uh, who, who now runs a very successful uh, uh, wedding and uh, portrait, family portrait uh, business here in Hamilton. Fantastic. And I think the next one we're going to see here uh, from Brian Higgins, this one actually won uh, Best in Show uh, in uh, a couple of years ago. Now. Yes, it did. And, and, uh, and this is uh, from a Studio Four class, so, so final uh, year project, final semester, where uh, the, the last one, uh, the last assignment is a series and, and you're dealing with your instructor on a regular basis and, 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 and running off of different concepts and trying to, to narrow down. It's not just point and shoot, it's, it's building that concept, finding out exactly what the lighting diagrams are going to look like, how you're going to be lighting your subjects, what, what your modifiers are going to be and, and who's your subject going to be, how they're going to be uh, composed, what lenses you'll be using and so on. For example, that last, uh, that last shot that, that we just saw was shot with a real specific piece of glass and I know uh, we're going to get into uh, uh, some of the, the fantastic optics that, that you offer but that was shot with a 200 uh, I, f2 I think uh, that's one of lens my and personal top one of one favorite lenses <laughs> yeah, we, and, and we have this the, for the students to use in the equipment room and and um, well, hold on a second I don't think everybody heard that but here at Mohawk College they actually have the 200 millimeter f2 uh, yeah, and, and, and absolutely, and we could see, I mean, I don't know if you can notice on, on the monitors at home, but the drop off in, in, uh, in depth of field, or, or, or as yeah. like people like to say today, bokeh, and, right. and that really shallow depth of field. And, and most people use the 200 mil lens for a, uh, you know, a landscape or possible nature lens, mm -hmm. and, and, and we like to bring things into the studio as well on location, but uh, yep. you can see the results. Think out of the box, yeah, I really, you, you really see that compression, yeah. And we have a couple more here uh, from, uh, uh, from your students as well? Yeah, again, uh, some, some first year uh, assignments. Uh, again, heavy. This uh, is a first year assignment. Yes, too. Wow. yes. Okay, so uh, again, in a very short period of time, they're gaining a lot of skill sets. We, uh, we push them uh, pretty hard. We want, we, the ultimate goal is, is having an incredibly strong portfolio. They need that diploma, they need that strong portfolio, they need that strong demo role. We want them hired at the end of the two years. Right, and at the, uh, I guess you have a, a breadth of different people coming into the program. In terms of their background, coming in, their, their uh, experience in photography, uh, etc. But from what I've seen of all the breadth of work, uh, whether they're coming out of high school or whether they're a mature student, there's some high level work here. Yeah, uh, there's no question, and, and, and thanks, Fad. I, I absolutely agree with you. And, and we, again, we try to make it as, as real world as we can, um, but y y it's, it's not a class where, you know, to take lighthearted in, in terms of you just want to take the odd snapshot at all or, or iPhone photo. It's, you have to think of, of your concepts. You have to build your concepts, and, and you, have to take, you have to take it serious. Who's the viewer? How are you going to grab the viewer's attention? And, and everyone's posting on social media today, but how are you going to grab somebody's attention? And that's, that's tougher and tougher with every year. You know, everyone's scrolling through, through their phones now or their iPads or what have you, but how are you going to grab their attention? Right, there's a lot. And he, the next shot I think here is a real attention grabber because this is, uh, uh, you can walk us through some of these um, uh, composite shots. Here. Yeah, they are c composite, so multiple uh, uh, shots. Um, in essence, sandwiched together via Photoshop, and in this particular one we're looking at right now, multiple layers uh, from Matt McDougall, and, and w which really paid off for him uh, um, after he, he graduated. He has uh, many uh, images that you might actually see in, in uh, uh, multiple different areas in terms of food photography, and, and he actually right. has uh, all the uh, images on display on a display board in uh, uh, right now at Scotia Bank uh, Center. Beautiful. So I mean, what we're seeing here is a. Uh, the skill sets not only of the sh the shoot the lighting um, but the post production well post production is massive you're, today right yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely so so as I start off with in the dark room as I mentioned mm -hmm. at the beginning um, what we can do now with with post production and, and what we could uh, and the advances in post production you know make the photography much stronger and stronger with every year. Good, good, good. And we have a couple more uh, commercial shots, uh, commercial shoots here, just to show the breadth of the work that's coming. Yeah, out of the some program. some food photography. So again, the students uh, have the option in the final semester to to uh, to, to to decide what they uh, in some some 
classes to decide what they want to shoot and want to specialize in. And if you notice, you know, lighting, right? We just want, don't want to flood the, uh, the set with light. Sometimes we want to control and we want to uh, shape as much light as we can. And, yeah, there's and very small subtleties that only the photographer can really um, discern. A, a, right? Absolutely. If you could see the behind the scenes in, in, in many of these, yeah. you'd be uh, surprised at how many flags and, and fill cards and so on that we see here. And, and uh, you know, we're just ending there with, uh, with, with some painting with light right. uh, in a first year project. So. Cool. Um, you know, taking a shifting here just to talk about the other component that you mentioned, uh, the title of the program is Creative Photography Still and Motion. So motion is the part that we're going to talk about right now, mm -hmm. given the fact that, um, as I understand, you did kind of create this program around the DSLR format to address kind of both the capabilities of taking still, but as well as video. Do you want to kind of Talk us through your, your concept with that. Yeah, sure, absolutely. So second, third, and fourth semesters, an even split of, of, of shooting still images as well as shooting video. And um, <clears throat> as I mentioned today, to, to, to be hired uh, uh, in the industry, it's, it's essential to, to know mo both. But you look at advertising spaces today, and you look at a still image, and on an iPad or a phone, you'll touch it, and it turns into a video, or it turns into to maybe an image that you can move around in a 360. So how do you create those? that and, and our students need to, to know and understand how to create that. One of the big things now is, is of course uh, shooting a video on, on, on multiple different platforms and, and it, when we started this program DSLR was, was huge in the sense of the size of the sensor and, and the incredibly shallow depth of feel and that cinematic approach and that cinematic feel. Um, so you learn as far as how to light, uh, most students learn how to light portraits, learn how to light stills, uh, pardon me, uh, uh, still lifes on a still set. Now, how do you light similar onto a moving picture, onto a, onto a, onto a, a video? And, and the way we teach it on the very first video capture um, is moving pictures, is, is exactly that. So we're thinking, of, we're thinking of light first and foremost. We're thinking of what focal length we're choosing. Um, where's the drop off in depth of field? And, and these images now are just moving. And if we think of it that way, the transition from going from still to, to video makes it much easier. And, and ultimately, you have your strong eye in, in still photography. You have a strong eye for video as well. It's, it's a, it's a, it makes sense the way the two mesh. Those skill sets can be, uh, can transcend from one medium to another. And uh, I guess it's becoming more and more valuable to get the formal education in the lighting so that when it comes to applying those to video, they already have the mind of the photographer in terms of the lighting and the way to construct well, it. Well, absolutely. In, in the case for our students, too, I, I mean, they get to network with, with the industry, and, and I feel that's, that's an incredibly important. And, you know, the very first week of the, uh, of, of the, for, of the program, um, we bring in vendors and, and, and you get to meet yourself and, and, and you've always uh, been there to support us uh, for, for the very first week of the program and, and, and to think of, you know, you get to go week one and you get to, okay, so I have a Nikon camera and oh, wow, I met the Nikon rep or, or we also have other manufacturers coming in and they get to meet all these different uh, uh, reps and they get the contact of, of, of who these people are and, and, uh, and lighting and, and, and different uh, um, stores and where you go to buy equipment and, and who do you contact if you need a repair. So, you know, contacts uh, in the industry are incredibly important, you know, where, where everyone today thinks um, it, it's a little bit easier because of, you know, finding things online. Well, it's better when you actually know that, that, that person's personal email or work email where you, where you can contact them immediately. So, you know, from, from, from week one, we, we, we want you to, to think of this as a profession, being as professional as possible and start making those contacts. Speaking of professional, I know we're going to get to this later, but that's one of the things that I'm glad you kind of drive home with your students because in a, in a matter of a couple of years, they could be working professionals. And that's one of the things that we strive to do at Nikon is create that professional um, level of service. And we do come in and talk to your students about that, especially about our new uh, NPS campus program. But before we get into that, I did want to just show a, a couple of cool edits here when mm -hmm. we're now that we're talking about video um, from your students. And one of, here, one of the one here we're looking at is kind of like a day in the life of um, of uh, shooting yeah, here this at is, College. Yeah, uh, this is the evening. <clears throat> this is our open studio. So we have uh, our main studio is our heartbeat uh, of our program. And, and that studio can be split into five separate studios. And the, I heavily promote the students to use the equipment as much as we possibly can and create those images. So every evening, there's open studio access and the students uh, go to the equipment room, they sign out a key and they have a, a full cabinet. And that cabinet will have eight studio, uh, or pardon me, eight strobe heads 
uh, multiple pocket wizards, uh, almost every modifier you, you could imagine from snoots to large soft boxes, medium sized soft boxes, beauty dishes, you name it. Um, fill cards, large, uh, large flags, and, and it's a full working uh, a studio. We try to promote the open studio as much as possible because at the end of the day, we want these students shooting. The more you shoot, the more you're going to learn, the better your eye is going to be, the better your work's going to be. Well, I, when we came here, we came here just at the end of uh, the live studio. So, That's right. And I just want to tell people out there, it's actually reading week and people are coming here during the reading week to shoot in the so studio. Our, yeah, our reading week, uh, uh, we were always open from eight to four and, uh, and, and our students were, were still in there shooting and we yeah. had to uh, wait for them to, uh, to leave before we, uh, before we set up. But uh, that will give you an idea of, uh, of how many students are, are hungry to create images in, in this program. Yeah, you know, and it, it, you're creating a problem too because a lot of them that leave have withdrawal because they have access to all this <laughs> equipment here and uh, not necessarily so when they when they leave so it's it's a kind of catch-22 I did want to show a couple of uh, another uh, edit here it's a uh, it's a one-minute edit and it Ah, this is, yes, yeah, this is uh, Carla King's uh, grad days uh, going across the, uh, the red carpet, so to say. This is what they strive for, and this is after the two years is their convocation day, and he's strapped on a GoPro, and this is him coming across the stage, and, uh, uh, and, and quite an honor, and, and I'm glad you guys got to witness this, and, uh, and here we uh, is our faculty right here and I'd love to shake your hand or give you a hug at the end of it. Our fantastic professors Robert Knoll, Alex Coombs and Mike Visser who were there on stage that day and uh, and of course uh, uh, Sue uh, Pinnock who's uh, our fantastic student success advisor but we have uh, this program we have tons of support in in, in, uh, in not only faculty but support as well and a support from uh, uh, from our student success advisor as, as well as, as from our associate dean and, and, and deans and, and that's what really helps uh, uh, with, this, with the support of this program in terms of uh, the students really uh, benefit from, from, from all the support, not only from faculty here, but outside the program. Yeah, well, I mean, speaking of, I mean, it was great this September coming in to that first week where we had Vendor Week there and got a chance to network with the students. I think we have a shot here of the group of them, a <laughs> yes. real chipper bunch and enthusiastic. I, I just love the enthusiasm. Every time the new recruits. Uh, we, we come, we're always getting, you know, the questions and the enthusiasm from all the students. And, uh, you know, a couple of times a year we'll come and we'll uh, show the students the, uh, some new announcements, some new gear that might come out. And I'm always impressed of how up to date they are mm -hmm. on the new tech because yeah, it's changing every single month. They are hungry um, for knowledge for sure. Ah, yeah, absolutely. And um, not only that, but um, we're here also to support them in terms of a, a kind of a pro level of service that we started here in Canada. It's called the Nikon NPS campus program in which we give the students uh, a little bit more expedient repair. We also warranty their gear as long as they're enrolled here at the um, Mohawk College Creative uh, Still in Motion program. We actually apply that to um, all of the different colleges across Canada. Yeah, and you just showed a uh, the last slide. There was a it was a lineup of students uh, in line to try and get uh, their or not to try, but to get their their uh, their cameras clean and checked. And what clean and check is 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 something that you offer, and you guys are second to none. You need to understand that and, and how your support and and for you know one of the big factors for a digital photographer today is is support from from the manufacturer. And and I want to thank you for that. And 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 truly, no one supports. Um, this program like Nikon does and, and, and I'm growing with other vendors there's no question but no one's even uh, in the same ball game as you guys so I, I do appreciate that Mark and, and that's, uh, that does stem from you um, but to, to think that you get your sensor clean which is a $50 value if you were to take that anywhere else you get your as many lenses as your own clean and it's just a matter of, of, of waiting in line for, for the brief <laughs> period of time. And, and, and it's same day. It's not shipped out anywhere. You bring in the, uh, the techs here. And these are the same techs that uh, are shipped out to, or, or sent to and, and work at Olympics, Olympics and, yep. and, and that type of thing, which is, which is an awesome, uh, awesome experience. And, and I know for our students, uh, um, you, you know, it's something they'll never forget. And it also gives them a chance to talk to the actual techs. And how many other uh, manufacturers allowed for that? It, it's, it's, it's unheard of, and, uh, and it's a huge perk for all our students. So, so again, thank you uh, to you, Mark. Yeah, thank well, you to Nikon. It's, uh, it's been uh, great interacting with the students, especially because we get to give them the opportunity to uh, experience a little bit of that Nikon professional service. Also, because, you know, once they graduate, they oftentimes become 
full-time working photographers, uh, and they're going to enroll into the full-blown full uh, Nikon NPS professional service program. Um, you know, for those of you watching at home, also interested in what we call NPS, uh, you can find out more from our website at Nikon.ca under uh, service and support. There's a section there under it for NPS. Um, speaking of that, the, the three pictures that we showed there, you know, it was interesting because we came in for that clean and check. And um, as I was going home, I was in my car and I got this uh, notification on my phone. It was vibrating because on the Instagram feed, <laughs> like within 30 minutes of us leaving, there was already this 15 second edit, same day yes. edit. So your guys are already ready for wedding photography uh, season with these same well, day Well, not only wedding, but uh, commercial <laughs> clients now too. Most uh, 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 commercial companies uh, or company, corporate companies want have Instagram feeds and they want to get the word out there as quickly as possible. So, uh, um, you know, quick quick edits a, is a big thing. So not only do they need to cap, understand capture, but uh, but editing quickly. So uh, that, that, uh, that was a quick edit and uh, just a sample of some of the students' work. Well, we have a, a couple of more quick edits here, but before I do, what's your, uh, um, uh, sorry, your Instagram uh, account for Mohawk College? Well, it, it's Mohawk Photography. It's, that's uh, key there, it's, I-T-S, Mohawk It's photography. student run, yeah. uh, completely student run, so it's, it's not from me, it's not from faculty. Uh, it has been student run since, uh, since they started, and uh, it's, the, uh, it's the best of the students' work. Excellent. Um, now, speaking of, there's also a couple of open houses that people can learn more about this program yes. once in the fall, once in the spring, right? Yes, we that's correct. We have some behind-the-scenes images of this. Yeah, so we'll show this uh, next, and, and uh, we'll have one coming up November 3rd. Uh, you're welcome to come out and see what we're all about. I'd love to talk to you and, and show you what it's like uh, in person. Um, you know, I love our open houses. Uh, I, I, as well, uh, have represented uh, multiple camera companies and, and worked at some of the big shows, and, and, and I see the value in that. I see the value in talking to uh, to, to people in, interested in photography. The students that, that I'm looking for to, for the program and our faculty is looking for in the program are students that want to be here. And, and, and you know, it, the open houses are incredibly important in the sense of you get to experience what it's like and, and, uh, and, and see what our, our program's all about. And what we have is, is we have uh, four of the five studios we'll, we'll be running. We'll have first year students working and shooting. We'll have second year students working and shooting. And we'll also have uh, some samples of work in, in the fifth studio, and all our, our, our faculty will be here to, uh, to ask questions. In fact, if, if you're really interested in photography, you'll get a chance to, uh, to, to, uh, to visit some of our photographers, and, and they'll let you shoot as well. So you can see what it's like working with a DSLR camera and some of the professional lenses and, and professional lighting and, and starting creating images uh, on that day. It's a good open house, yeah. We participated in it as well, and we come out and we kind of interact with the students, you know, give them a little bit of uh, information on the gear but it's great that the way you run it because people can kind of immediately immerse themselves in kind of what it feels like to be here and not just talk with someone but really kind of immerse themselves in the workflow what is it like to be in the studio and actually talk with the students yeah absolutely photography uh, to, to learn photography it's got to be hands-on it can't be textbook I mean textbook for support no question but it's got to be hands-on you have to experience it to create those images um, one thing to when you're talking to the faculty I mean I'm gonna tell you it's the best program in the world because I because I helped build it and we do our students on set so you can talk to them. What's it really like? What do you think about this program? What are the pros and cons? And, and they'll give you an, an honest uh, a, a interpretation of what they feel. And, and one of the things I love is, is when I see our students you know, shooting, they got these big smiles and, and loving what they're doing. I, I, nothing better than igniting uh, the new generation of photographers. So when uh, new students are coming into the program, what is some of the gear that they would want to get? Kind of a minimum level of gear that you, right. So, you, you so want currently, what they need is they they need a DSLR camera to get in, um, and they need 18 megs. It's got to be 18 megs at least, which is which is a pretty you know it's not a <laughs> large quantity. 18 megs to start off with for the still, and then on on the video side, that same camera has to be able to shoot in 24p as well as 30 frames per second on the video side um, at 19, 20, 1080. So okay. that's the the minimum specs. Uh, on DSLR, they'll need a tripod, they'll need a flash, they'll need a MacBook Pro, um, they'll need photo, a subscription for Photoshop. Well, it's Adobe CC, so the main things are Photoshop and, and Premiere. So we do our video editing on Premiere, our uh, still editing on Photoshop. We use a couple other softwares uh, um, uh, on campus, which we'll teach you about. It's all in that Adobe CC package, but uh, that will get you into the program. It's, a, uh, it, it, it's currently open uh, for September of next year. Um, you can apply and uh, um, what we're working on is um, 
you'll need five still images portfolio, and mm. that's a small portfolio, but five still images, um, which we'll be grading, uh, um, and they'll be looking at your grade 12 English grade as well. And as far as the portfolio goes, uh, I'm looking for somebody with a strong eye. You don't have to go wow us with a, a trip far away. Um, it could be something in your backyard. I'm looking for somebody that has an eye for composition, an eye for exposure, uh, an eye for light. And someone that's a, a good uh, a student that, that wants to learn, that wants to become a photographer, um, that we can mold into a, a working pro. Uh, just one more thing. What about lenses? What is the lenses that you, sh you so, kind of want them? Now, yeah. uh, given <laughs> knowing that once they come here, they have access to a large That's pool right. of lenses. I believe uh, one of the things that got me the, when uh, we're talking about this program being kind of state of the art is we talked about one guy having a 200, uh, using a 200 millimeter yeah, F2 here. Yeah, we have lots here. of exotic glass. There's a lot of exotic glass here. You, there's perspective control tilt shift yes. lenses yes. over here. Portrait lenses, I think, you know, 1.4 lenses, wide angle 1.4 lenses, flashes, but if they're coming in, I mean, those are pool lenses. Yeah, so. What is a staple lens that you want you know, to come in with? Uh, at bare minimum right now to get into the program you'll, you'll, you'll need a, uh, a kit lens so typically it would be an 18 to like 55 18 on a crop kit. sensor um, but we're also looking I know there's been some uh, amazing announcements in the last uh, a month or so um, and new technologies and so so we're also looking at some mirrorless right okay so it's you're open now to mirrorless as a kind of a solution coming into the program um, mm -hmm. both from a stills and a video perspective obviously there's a lot of advantages Absolutely. for video yeah. Um, and we, we did talk about Nikon's new Z series camera a couple of episodes ago. So uh, the exciting stuff this year in 2018. Um, now, just kind of closing things off, it's, it's one of uh, Nikon Canada's uh, fun times of year when we look at the end of your program and that and is kind of the, gala. the graduate gala here in downtown. So. Uh, we do have some kind of behind the scenes images here and yeah, what we're looking at, look at the, look at the turnout. We partnered that, up with an came. amazing uh, a gallery downtown Hamilton um, on the corner of James and, and Cannon and it's called Hamilton Artist Inc. Very funky <laughs> place. There's uh, yeah. Mark and I. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, That's just outside. Some, yeah. yeah, just outside in, one, in the courtyard. Um, uh, amazing uh, a studio, uh, pardon me, amazing gallery and you know part of our, our partnership with, with, uh, with this gallery is our students, they have uh, full workshops for our students and that's part of the partnerships where they teach the students how to uh, 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 create a show and, yes. and they do workshops on, on, on uh, how, the, how they're setting up the show and installation and, and, and what to do for your installation. Your students is, are actually installing it themselves. That's correct, yeah, that's okay. correct, yes. And they're working with the gallery and it's just an, it's an, it's an added value for our students. That's, a, that's, it comes full circle. There's no wasted time in this program. <laughs> <laughs> we try right to cover up, all right the corners, Right up until the, the, the graduate gala, they are learning uh, how to right. uh, how to present, and then of course, uh, uh, great support by Nikon, and they do a best of show uh, yes, image. Uh, um, so here's uh, some of our winners: uh, Jen Coit uh, uh, from last year uh, or two years ago. Pardon me, uh, right. uh, Brian Higgins Brian, here. Yeah. And he got best in show best as in well show, with that. That's Again, right. that was with the 200 millimeter F2, and With the 200, that's right. And uh, and last year, uh, Riza Arkes. Um, yeah. And her shot, I don't know if we can hang on that for a minute. It was uh, it just an amazing, amazing series of, of work. And she's actually uh, um, shot all this in the studio, but made it look like they were buildings in a, in a miniaturized uh, uh, type look uh, as far as an, another student here and what she had to really cr concentrate on and, and I know it's tough on the reflection of that photograph in terms of because it was in the gallery but what she had to recreate was the uh, the harsh shadows uh, uh, that we're looking at here and, and recreate from not only from the very first image uh, of the portrait and uh, the full body and then recreate that into the second image and then, and then sandwich those together. It Her presentation funky, yeah. at the end too was, was, was quite, quite impressive. Um, when you say presentation, meaning uh, it was a, a final series in uh, in a Studio Four class, oh, okay, where okay. the students actually present their body of work. Well, when I saw her, that we saw one image there, but it was actually a series of, I believe, about three different images that she did mm -hmm. in that miniaturized format. Yeah, As a matter of fact, she had five. Yeah, we had a um, a gala of our own with some of our. That's uh, right. We did an outreach to uh, the Nikon community on Facebook, and hers was one of the ones that were selected at 
to be printed and displayed at the Contact Festival this past year in 2018, around uh, the May time frame. I so, love hearing uh, that Mohawk grads getting noticed. Yes, yes, yes. So she got, she double dipped there on the <laughs> prestige. So that was great. And I had the opportunity to meet her and uh, give her the award for uh, one of the best in shows there. So that was great. Now, uh, I mean, we're, uh, we're kind of uh, gone through a whirlwind there with your program. And um, what we're going to do right now for the folks at home is we're going to take a break uh, for two minutes here. And when we come back, we're going to get some questions from you guys in the audience. So for the next couple of minutes, if you want to send us uh, any questions in the live feed below, go ahead, type some questions about anything you want to talk about, whether it be Nikon or education in photography here at Mohawk College. Me and Scott will be back to answer some of those questions. See you in two minutes. We're back. That was a demo reel there, a sizzle reel, actually scintillating sizzle reel of your program and a lot of the, a lot of the students that went through that. Before we get to the Q&A, guys. What are you uh, setting me up for here, Mark? We got, okay, this is sort of a new tradition here on Nikon TV. It's called Cruise of Versus. It's me versus you. Great. And um, the purpose of this is to challenge you, okay? Because here at Nikon, we kind of believe in this whole touch and feel, you know, the ergonomics of the Nikon like system. So what I'm going to do right now is I am going to put in your hands a product. I'm not going to tell you what it is, okay? I'm figuring you can figure out whether it's a flash, a camera, so. or a lens, but it's up to you <laughs> to figure out exactly what it is blindfolded. Just by touching it, you can smell it if you want. I don't want you to taste it because we have to return this to the service department later. <laughs> okay, so outstretch your hands. Okay. I am going to put in the, in your hands and you have 30 seconds oh, to figure geez. out what that product is. Okay, and you unfortunately, unlike uh, who wants to be a millionaire, you do not have a lifeline. This is all up to you. <laughs> you can't call anyone. You can't give uh, five guesses. Well, I'll tell you what. I started off when, when I mentioned at, at Mirror Sport, <laughs> and I was loading rolls of film, and I eventually became a photographer for them. And they used these cameras called F4E, specifically E's, because they were they're very very durable. And and I eventually my first cameras I bought were F90Xs, and this feels somewhat similar to that. It's obviously a digital camera, as we can see, <laughs> feel the back of that. I'm gonna say it's an F. Oh, pardon me, a D4S. Good Lord, oh my Lord. Ah, I was, no, no, because the best I can do now is tie. I was for sure, Boom. I thought you would be thrown Tell me off because, I know my Nikon cameras. Because you've been shooting with the D5 lately. I okay? have been, and, that, and was, that wasn't it. That was my, ah. <laughs> That was what I thought I would hey get you with. I Sticks. thought he would think it was the D5, but he knows the subtleties. I hope you're watching. <laughs> he, 
He knew the subtleties to know that this was in fact the D4S, the previous model. I don't know how you did it because this wasn't rigged, this was for sure. I was actually <laughs> plotting with Kendall that I was gonna trick you because you would think it was, it was a D5, D5 and it was a, really a D4S. You got it right, okay. The best I can do is, is ah, No tire. pressure, no okay? pressure. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna blindfold my, myself, fair game here, okay? And am, am I handing you? Or you, you, you are handing me, but I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, hold on a second here. I've got to double loop this so that uh, it Where doesn't fall going? off. Uh, the box is right here, okay? So this is the so box. So you're good. You are going to open it up and ha put it in my hand here, okay? So this it's, is exciting. It's uh, Kenny 1 <laughs> Cruise we're gonna find out all but. right well i'm glad i didn't get this one <laughs> all right <laughs> here you go i'm ready okay. good luck good luck oh boy okay so right off the top i know it's a d lens because it has this coupling right here okay mm -hmm. so i know it's a d lens and somewhere around here is the switch to release it so that's the aperture uh, control right there like a Rubik's Cube. The question is, uh -oh. what is it? So I'm looking at the modeling at, of the zoom. Okay, so it's, zo it's a zoom, obviously, so it zooms out, okay. And what is this? This is 67 cap, okay. Um, how many more seconds do I have, guys? Okay, this is 10, okay. And this is the focusing <laughs> ring right here. So the focusing ring is very is short, so it means it has, to, oh, okay, so that means there's a, more to the focusing ring that's enabled by this. So that means this has a macro mode. It has a macro mode, it has a zoom and a macro. I'm gonna say it's a 24 to 85 millimeter F2.8 to F4 macro. That's my final guess. Did I make it in time? Okay, so am I gonna open I it think up? You went, I think you went long on that. <sighs> I'm embarrassed <laughs> of how good I am when it comes to these things. I'm, I'm honestly embarrassed of myself because in order to know that, well, blindfolded okay anyone can get a d4s okay i i got the most obscure <laughs> lens and chris at the office who set this up i love it good challenge well good done challenge, chris. chris so thank you for that you made me look good because i had to work for that one okay so thank you okay cruise one kenny one Fair play, the, good job. Absolutely, okay? absolutely. All right. Well played, well played. Are we going to overtime? We are not going to overtime. We are going to Q&A because we're going to leave it at that. I don't want, there you go, Mark. we're all winners today, okay? All right. So guys, um, Facebook Live. We are on Facebook Live. So we are going to get to some questions here. Um, first one is from Michelle. And her question is, I'm assuming it's directed towards you, Scott, mm -hmm. is photography education really needed to pursue it as a career? So, I mean, that's a fair question. And a lot of days now there are entrepreneurs, yep. they're just kind of doing it, weekend warriors. You're obviously a proponent for education. Yeah, of course. What would you tell people? Uh, well, are... you, you know, there, there's, there's tons of things online now. And, 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 you know, what can we trust online? And, and, and there's a lot of fantastic information online, of course. Um, and, and so if, if you feel that's the right approach, what you benefit from, from being submersed into a, a two-year photography program is, is you have access to, well, one, the studio, all this gear. We constantly uh, invest in our gear, so we have new technology, and, and um, as well as the professors, you know, the feedback, the, uh, the real-world uh, uh, professors and, and working pros, and, 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 find, and, and bouncing off concepts with them, getting feedback and critiques on a regular basis. And you know how he started off is, is, is contacts. And, and, and you know, just because you watch something online, sure, you're going to learn things, of course. Okay, hopefully it's the right things. But who are, you know, how are they going to meet you? How are they going to meet the other reps? And how are they going to meet the other photo studios that are maybe in your city or, or, or in a major city around? So, you know, those are big perks. And not only that, but you're going to meet other photographers. And many of our graduates, actually, we have alumni right now that have built businesses together because uh, they met here and, and they've developed their businesses together while they're uh, in school here. That's right, uh, you mentioned a good point, a lot of the networking that happens here at your school, uh, the critiques I think is really valuable because Absolutely. I mean, you're, you know, you're not working in the silo, it, you can up your game, not only by the critiques from your professors, but also the critiques from the other students, right? Yeah, photographers need uh, constant feedback and you don't need that just for the two years while you're here, you need that as, as, you, as you grow and, and learn to be a photographer. Excellent, and I notice also a lot of your students are actually coming back 
to the school and giving a, a couple of talks here. Yes, the, yeah, we, and, and again, on, on that first week too, we have uh, um, successful graduates that uh, uh, come to, to, to inspire and motivate uh, the students and make sure that they ha are successful for the two years while they're here. Excellent. Um, here's another one from Robert, uh, and he, it's another inbox question. He asks, how long are most photography programs at schools? So long, you know, we have a lot in Canada. Now. Yeah, a lot of, of them in, in Canada are two to three years. Uh, um, I think most of them are, are, are two years right now. Um, uh, yeah. That's, that, that's about the average. We're, we're yeah. actually we're, we're looking at uh, the possibility of, of becoming a third year program with very specific third year, um, which isn't in the works yet, but uh, but a possibility. Cool. Uh, next question here is from Tara. Another inbox question. She asks. Uh, oh, okay. So I think this is more a uh, question for me. It's uh, do. I have to own any gear to be part of the NPS campus program. Okay, good. Mm. Um, yes, we alluded to that. The NPS campus program, that's uh, kind of an offshoot of the full NPS program. And uh, that's specifically for post-secondary schools. And what you need to be part of that NPS program is you need at least one Nikon DSLR body and one uh, lens. So as long as you have one body, one lens, you're in the program. What the program gives you is it gives you access to five-day turnaround time. So, I mean, in your program, I think every semester is just about 14 weeks, right? Mm -hmm. So you That's don't right. want to yeah. be out of your gear for a long period of time. <laughs> Number two, even if you come into the program with gear that's uh, a little bit dated, so it's out of warranty, um, what that means is that we at Nikon Canada will warranty your gear as long as they're enrolled in, you know, a, a post-secondary program here in Canada. A we will warranty it, warranty it for the duration of the program, whether it's two years, whether it's three years, or if it's a four-year program, we will warranty it even if it's out of warranty um, as part of the Nikon NPS program. As well, um, some of the other perks is some uh, pricing and uh, we have a graduate bonus as well. So thank you for that question. The bottom line is you just need at least one um, Nikon DSLR and one Nikon lens. But uh, the DSLR can be any DSLR. It can be a D3000 series camera, a D5000 series camera. It doesn't have to be a pro body or a pro uh, lens. Okay. Um, thank you for that question, Tara. Now. Um, a couple of questions here. Let's go to Jim Tomey. And um, I think this, this one's uh, for me as well. What is the reaction to the new P1000? Just received mine in the mail and anxious to try it out. So a uh, couple, actually one episode ago, we had uh, an episode where we looked at the P1000. This is a new uh, super zoom bridge camera that's come out uh, from Nikon just in the last couple of months. It is a 24 to 3000 millimeter lens for those of you that haven't heard about it yet. The reaction has been positive because essentially uh, it's been over the moon, let's just say, because this is, a, <laughs> this is a lens that can actually zoom in and see the craters of the moon. So if you guys haven't uh, heard about this camera, check out uh, Nikon.ca. Also check out our YouTube channel where we've done a, a video on this new camera. Uh, go to YouTube and type in uh, Nikon Canada. We have some uh, content there on the P1000. Very cool camera. Also check out our previous episode on Nikon TV, our episode number nine, in which we talked about the P1000. So thanks for that question, uh, Jim. Uh, next question from Greg Cannon. Hey, this one's for you, Alumni. Scott. Alumni, fantastic. Hello, Alumni. Greg. Alumni. Hey, Greg. Um, uh, he was one of the guys that was uh, shooting, I believe, some of the hockey shots that yeah, we saw well, on yes. that uh, he got in with sizzle the reel. Bulldogs. Yep. Absolutely. His question is for you, Scott, uh, and his question says, proudest moment from Scott as the coordinator? That's a question. So what is your proudest moment as oh my the goodness. program That's coordinator? A, Greg, good question. Well done. Um, <laughs> you know, I have so many, and, and I, I think I'll, I'll start from being in my critiques when, when I... Uh, uh, we give, high, or I give a high five uh, when the students create a portfolio worthy image, which, uh, which uh, some students, you know, strive the full two years and, and to, to achieve. And, and I think that's, that's, that's all ultimately my favorite. But I think uh, ultimately um, when, when my students graduate and, and get hired in the industry and we have so many success stories and in multiple different uh, jobs, but uh, I would have to say that I'm not going to pick one specific. 
um, but, but ultimately working in the industry and having them now as colleagues as opposed to students. And, uh, and, and that's, a, that's an incredible honor. It's kind of like being a dad, you know, and launching your kids, <laughs> you know, into the workforce. You yes. know, it's very yeah. satisfying. Yeah. It must no be doubt. for you because it happens essentially every year. Yeah, right? absolutely. That's a, that's um, a perfect way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> this has been great, Scott. So you know what? Um, this has been uh, our 10th episode here of Nikon TV, and I think it went great. You were able to give our viewers kind of an in-depth uh, analysis of what photographic education is like in the year 2018. It's really changed, you know? And, and this last question is from me. What do you think the biggest change has been from maybe from when you went to school in a Sheridan College to now? Well, I, it, it's definitely speed and turnaround time. And, uh, you, you know, deadlines were always a thing. And, and uh, our turnaround time, as you saw from, from, what, from the visit when you were here, is, is almost instant now. So we have to, uh, uh, our, our gear allows us to capture quicker. Our post-production, our laptops, our post-production allows us to, to edit. But it has to be uh, a, a well-educated, uh, well-trained, uh, photographer doing all these things that can that can create those those quick timelines. Uh, when do when do when do our clients want them? Yesterday. So how do we create that? Uh, there's lots of pressure on them. So that would be my answer. Good stuff. Okay, guys. Well, um, tune in next time for another episode of Nikon TV. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your questions. Keep them coming, and subscribe and like our Facebook page so you can get notifications on our next episode. Till next time. Take care. Thanks, Mark.